Good evening, single saints, and welcome back to um, our forum, Single Saints Conversations. Yay! Okay, I am Linda, a member of the Save Single Summit team, and it is my privilege and distinct pleasure on behalf of our host, Gloria Godson, and the Save Single Summit team to extend a huge thank you and a and warm virtual hug to all of you, especially our esteemed panel guests for gracing us with your presence. Now, we are so delighted and very honored you have chosen to join us and to participate by sharing your thoughts on this segment entitled, How to Live a Successful Single Life. Now, did I say participate? That's right, I did say participate because we want to hear from you. Please give voice to your thoughts and put your comments and questions in the chat box. Now, just please sit back, relax, and enjoy your experience right here on Single Sense Conversations. And next, my colleague Becky will lead us in opening prayer. Becky? Thanks, Linda. So Father God, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you for this glorious day that you have made, Father God, and we do rejoice in it. Father God, we have so much joy in our heart and so much joy that you give us. And Holy Spirit, we just say tonight is yours, Father God, just invade this place, Father God, in this atmosphere. And Father, we just lift up every solitary detail of tonight. Of tonight. And um, Lord, we just uh, pray that there are no distractions, nothing that gets in the way for what's been uh, meant to be shared and what's been meant to be heard and received. Father God, because we know that your presence is here and we know that you have a word for us and just a word of encouragement, Lord God, a word of um, just a special nugget that you have for each of us. And we just thank you so much that you are such an intimate and real God and just alive in us. And so we thank you for that. And we just lift up our panelists and uh, Father God, we just say that everything that um, is shared tonight is just pleasing for you, to you, Father. And we just give you this night and we just praise you. We love you. And we just honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So next, I'm going to have to look at my notes so I don't miss a thing. But next person is a wow, wow, wow person to me. She's passionate. She's powerful. She's unshakable. And she's unstoppable. And people who know her can attest to this. And it's just a real honor to get to introduce her. She's highly anointed, very successful, an entrepreneur, and that's our Gloria Godson. She's an attorney by training, an author, a speaker, a prayer minister, a Bible teacher, a professional Christian counselor, a certified temperament counselor, and a licensed clinical pastoral counselor. She has a weekly Bible teaching program every Saturday morning on Reach Gospel Radio. She also co she's also the host on the Grace Talk which is a weekly live internet talk show. She's our host tonight, and she's actually the leader of Single Sense, which she actually birthed during COVID, recognizing that singles needed a forum to stay connected. She also founded, leads, and hosts our annual Save Single Summit event, which is only two weeks away on August 7th, plug, plug. Uh, but you'll be hearing more about that shortly. Mm -hmm. But um, all, I, all I can say is, honestly, you don't want to miss this event. She's the keynote speaker at this also. So she's absolutely beautiful. But the inside and who she is as a person is just what makes you amazing, Gloria. And she's a dear friend. So here's my friend, Gloria. I love you too, Becky. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the July Single Sense Conversation. I um, really, one thing that Becky is absolutely right about is I'm passionate and I am thankful to God. I am super excited. God has so much to give and we are just ready to receive everything that he has. You know, singles are dealing with so many issues around living a successful single life, dating and building relationships. 
unfortunately, there is hardly any forum, particularly in the church, uh, to foster decisive dialogue, learning, and growth in any of these areas. This is why God has set up this forum to fill that void and to provide support for healthy living, personal growth, and kingdom connections for singles. Now, our vision is to empower every Christian single to be whole, W-H-O-L-E, and to live a life filled with God's presence, purpose, passion, and power. Now, please note that this is not a matchmaking service. A single sense, what we do is to invite you to know Christ intimately and to connect with his single sons and daughters in fun and fellowship. Our mission is twofold. First is to create a safe space for single Christians to find community and to grow together as people of strength, dignity, and grace. And number two, to empower every Christian single to live an abundant life. Lives that are free from self-pity, regret, desperation, or low self-esteem. And to make a choice daily to honor God in their season of singleness. Now, I will turn it over to TJ to present our upcoming events. TJ? Hey, everyone. What's going on? I'm going to talk about some upcoming events as well as some ways that you can connect with us going forward. Um, this weekend, we have the Temperament Workshop with Single Faith, as well as a volunteer event with Community. Later on, there's also um, a hike at the State Park, as well as a bowling event on the 31st. Um, also on the 31st is a fish fry in New Jersey, which sounds like a great time. And drum roll, please, on August the 7th is a Save Single Summit in person. Um, this is a can't miss event. Um, truly a life-changing experience where you get to connect with other like-minded people as well as with God and really help help with your walk in Christ. Um, later on in the month, uh, there's also the volunteer event at Slow Cafe, as well as another volunteer event with Community. Um, recurring, we have the Grace Talk, uh, which Gloria hosts Sundays at 6 p.m., as well as this event, which is Single Sense, which is the fourth Friday um, at 7 p.m. Um, so ways to connect with us are on Instagram, Facebook, Meetup, as well as YouTube. Gloria is also um, can be reached on our, on our website at GloriaGodson.com as for Christian counseling, as well as um, she can be heard on the radio on Reach Gospel Radio, um, 9.30 every Saturday. And then the next slide is just a recap of some great events that we've had over the past a year or so. Um, so we've had some great game nights, um, ice cream socials, um, bowling events. So you name it. Um, throughout this whole area, you know, Jersey, Delaware, PA, Maryland, um, there's tons of activities going on and tons of ways for singles to connect and grow and walk together. And as mentioned, coming up on August the 7th is the Save Single Summit. This is a all day event of faith and fun. Um, it's the journey, the focus this time is on uh, your journey to wholeness and taking personal inventory. Um, so it's a can't miss event. Um, there's going to be continental breakfast as well as lunch and dinner provided. Um, there's going to be uh, workshops, panel discussions, the man cave and she shed. If you were there uh, last time in person for the man cave, it was truly um, uh, an unforgettable experience. Um, there's going to be fun and games, some DJ dancing. So it's truly, truly an event that you don't want to miss. Uh, be sure to register now um, because seats will um, be sold out soon. So um, with that being said, I will go ahead and pass it off to Melissa to kick off the icebreakers. All right. Hi, everybody. We are going to get a little bit interactive. So get your fingers ready to type. Um, we're just gonna play a fun game. Uh, I've got some uh, some themes here, and uh, so I'm looking for you guys to put in the chat um, which one you're gonna pick. So this is a game. I'm sure you guys have played it before. It's one's gotta go, right? So of the four things, 
if you had to choose one to give up, you know, for the rest of your life or, you know, however long, um, which one would it be? So first we have the tambourine. You know, there's always that person in the front row in the tambourine. <laughs> um, the organ, the pipe organ, um, the drum set, drums at church, and the harmonica. So what are people saying? Just type in the chat, which one would you be able to live without? That organ, harmonica, a lot of people don't like the harmonica. <laughs> Michael doesn't like a tambourine. Take of the drums. Sometimes the drums are kind of loud. Drums. If I had to pick one, which one would it be? Hmm. I would probably pick the tambourine. <laughs> harmonica. Harmonica. So I think it's, it's I think harmonica is pretty up there. <laughs> All right, last call for last answers. All right, next one. The church hat, <laughs> a choir robe, alligator shoes, very loud suits. Which one would you live without? Someone said the alligator shoes, <laughs> the loud suit, <laughs> the robe. Okay, Robin shoes, shoes, that suit. <laughs> it is just a generic loud suit, you know, no offense to anybody that wears this type of suit. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. The next one, church fundraisers, the car wash, Girl Scout cookies, bingo, fish fry. If you had to live without one, which one would it be? So Mark says fish. Janice says the car wash. Wanda, Dominique, car wash. Mary says the girl stock. And they're so cute, right? You don't want to like say no to these little kids, but like, I don't like all the cookies. <laughs> Sega said car wash. Lynette said the car wash. George said the car wash. Any, any other ones? All right, the last one is a little bit of a stretch. So we're gonna have some, we can have some Christian fun here, right? So saving your friend asked you to save a seat in church, you know, so that's the, a meme of that. Funny church signs. I, I think they're hilarious, but some people, you know, they're over it. Um, <laughs> the meme where it's a new worship song and you know, you don't know it. And so, you know, you're kind of like ready to sing, but uh, you don't know the words. And then, you know, the, the preacher is preaching and you know they're talking about you. You're like, ah, how did they know that? So if you had to get rid of one of those experiences, <laughs> which would it be? We're having a hard time of saving a seat. It's awkward because then they're late and people are like, are you saving this? And you said, yes. And then 30 minutes later, yes, I'm still saving it. And then they found, they found, they found a seat in the back. <laughs> Doris said, not knowing the words. Jonna said, saving a seat. <laughs> Linda said, saving a seat. <laughs> Mary said, when the preacher is preaching about me. <laughs> cool. All right, last call. Any last ones? And Mark said, saving a seat. So I just want to have a little fun. I get to know each other a little bit. So, you know, feel free to keep chatting, keep asking questions in the chat. Uh, we're monitoring that and that's how they get to the panelists. And, um, you know, just be active and participate and we'll appreciate that. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Gloria. Hey, Melissa, thank you. That was beautiful and funny too. A lot of church humor there. And we are all, uh, most of us are church people and it's uh, kind of hits a little uh, close to home there. Um, we have a powerful event and panel planned for tonight. But first, I want to uh, get to some ground rules. Um, first, the Bible is infallible word of God and the final arbiter on all single sense questions, issues, and discussions. So here at Single Sense, we do not question, challenge, or debate the Bible. We 
accept the Bible as the word of God and whatever it says, that's it. We, we accept that. At Single Sense, we maintain a positive environment and we treat one another with respect. So be kind in your comments, in your questions, in the chat. And yes, we do want you to ask questions, to engage with our panel and to participate. So please do that. And while you are at it, please have a lot of fun. Right, let's dive in. Now we have just an outstanding, phenomenal panel tonight. Our first panelist is Eric Williams. Eric is a football legend. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He has made four Pro Bowl appearances and he was inducted into the Football Hall of Fame last year. Most importantly, Eric is a family man and he is a proud father to his four children. Eric is also a businessman and spiritual leader. He is a minister right now. He is a Philly native and he grew up in the inner city. He led powerful offensive plays in Central State, Ohio, and was drafted by the Cowboys in the third round in 1991. Eric has more awards, honors, and lifetime achievements that we have time to read tonight. So I am not even going to try. It just know that he is very accomplished and has overcome uh, tremendous obstacles through his faith in God prayers, and the love of his family. Eric, welcome to this uh, single sense. Our next panelist is Michael Piles. Michael was raised in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. He has a degree in business from the University of South Carolina and an MBA from Penn State. Michael grew up in the Episcopal Church. He currently works as an accountant and he loves to play guitar at his church. Last but by no means the least is George Cephas. George, I hope I'm calling your name right. George is, is a transformation coach, community and youth advocate and father. He is the founder of Survival to Success, a nonprofit organization focused on helping black and brown communities to heal spiritually, mentally, and financially through youth programming, community engagement and transformation coaching. He is also the author of an online book and the founder of Hurt, Heal and Grow online magazine. George is a minister in training at Verity Outreach Worship Center where he helps to lead the youth ministry. George and Michael, welcome to the Single Sense Conversation for July. All right. Our topic today is how to lead a successful single life. Now, success looks differently for the, to different people. So my first question to the panel is this, what is a successful single life? How would you define that? Eric, we'll start with you. Um, well, I, I believe that a successful single life is a life centered around rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. That's the short answer. And I, I say that because of my travels in life and also because I, you know, I used to think that a successful single life was based on how many tangible objects you could acquire, whether it be clothes, money, jewelry, houses, cars, women, etc. But upon further review, I now realize that only what you do for Christ is going to last in this life. Amen. There you have it. Upon, I like how he said it. Upon further review, <laughs> you know, we get wiser as we get older and things begin yes. to come into sharp focus, right? And we find yes. out really what is important. Thank you, Eric. Michael, what Amen. are your thoughts? What is a successful single life? Um, yeah, like Eric, uh, staying true to Christ is just so very important, no matter who you are. And I only guess as a man, as a woman, as a child, as anyone, uh, that's, that's paramount to anything. Um, also, being a part of the solution and not part of the problem, 
Uh, we find ourselves today in so much turmoil in this country and in this world. We have a pandemic going on. We have uh, crime going on all around the country, especially the major cities like where I live is right next to Philly, right near Philadelphia. So uh, those are, to me, are the most important things, uh, being part of the solution and trying to find ways to, um, to just to solve those problems. Even, you know, you're only one person, but one person can do something. Uh, yeah, I was a mentor for uh, two children in my lifetime, and I uh, need to get back and to do it and find time to do it again. So um, I think that's, that's very, very important to um, just being successful and treat others fairly. Amen. Success is focused on Christ and being able to contribute positively to the community where you are to be able to by impact and influence. George, you are a first timer. So tell us what does success look like for you? Yes, um, I definitely agree with Michael and Eric. I would definitely say your single season is about walking in your purpose, um, developing your relationship with God and developing your relationship with yourself. Um, and that only comes through, through time with God, you know, time, time alone, the time separating from, you know, people that you may used to be around a lot. You know, that's something that I had to do for myself. Um, but definitely tilling to the ground of what you came from. You know, we talked about that the other day, you know, just being rooted in your community, being rooted in your ministry and what God wants you to do. And, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all these things shall be added unto you. So I would definitely say that that, that it's all about walking in ministry and in purpose. So this, listen, ladies, I don't know. I mean, I know you guys, forgive me for a minute, but ladies, don't you love to hear this man talk about Jesus? This is so amazing to hear. All three of them say that Jesus is the number one thing. I mean, for me, that truly uh, makes my heart glad because if you're sitting out there in culture, you wouldn't hear this. You would hear that it's all terrible. Everybody's corrupt. Everybody's in the sewer, but there's a different story. And that's the story that Jesus Christ is writing every single day in our lives. He has the pen and he's not done writing yet. I love to hear this kind of commentary from these guys. But now guys, let's get real. Let's get a little bit deeper, right? <laughs> Jesus is number one, we've established that. But let's talk about it. What are the challenges that you face as a single Christian man? I'm gonna ask you to start. Well, Eric, I see you starting already. I was gonna ask Michael to start, but you can go ahead. You can go, you're willing to do it. It, it, it doesn't matter. Michael can go. It, it no, you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, well, praise God. Um, for me, some challenges that I face are temptations with my flesh. Uh, I have to be careful about what I see through my eyes. I cannot look at things too long. And for me, the way to overcome temptation is to keep alert and pray. Keeping alert means being aware of the possibility of, of temptation and uh, the sensitivity to the subtleties and spiritually equipped to fight it. You know, because of temptation, because temptation strikes where you are most vulnerable, we can't resist it alone. So, you know, it's going to take prayer where we are most vulnerable, you know? Um, also the Holy Spirit helps me with challenges. You know, the word of God says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, you know, we, we gotta constantly pray, you know, to uh, help ask God to help us with those temptations. You know, salvation is a lifetime. So we're constantly doing it. It's a lifetime journey. And listen, I love it. Keeping it real. The flesh is alive and well. And, uh, you know, he's telling us one of the things, those who know me, you know, I've talked about this all the time. You know, the gateways into your heart, the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate to, to, to make sure that you guard these access points because the enemy is going to target you in the areas where you are most vulnerable. We know that he, he is very strategic and he learns you, he knows what you like. The devil is not gonna give you a uh, fish when you hate fish. He's not gonna give you pork when you don't like pork. He's gonna give you exactly what you like because he wants to entrap you. But we thank God for Holy Spirit. You know, he just Amen. said, Holy Spirit helps us. That is his job to help us. What do you wanna say, George? Why don't you jump in there? Do you have any thoughts? How do we, 
uh, what are the challenges and how do we overcome them? I would say uh, my biggest challenge uh, in my single season has been acknowledgement. Um, acknowledging the fact that I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> and that I was completely like just messing up. Like I was just completely just falling, completely falling into unhealthy relationships over and over again. And I had to acknowledge the fact that one, I had no idea what I was doing. I had to acknowledge the fact that um, that I was selfish in ways, right? Um, I had to acknowledge the fact that I had so a lot of pride that I had to put to the side, right? Um, in order to make room for God. Um, it was, I had to acknowledge a lot of shortcomings. I had to acknowledge the fact that I wasn't walking in my purpose. And so that was the biggest part for me was just acknowledging where I was at in my walk. And I feel like that a lot of times that's really hard, especially for us as men because of our ego, because of our pride, you know, we hold ourselves to, to this high esteem. But when you get in God's face, he show you who you really are. And you start to see that you're not so tough as you think you was. You, you're not really where you thought you was at. He starts to show you you. And he starts to reveal, you know, those dark places in your heart. He starts to reveal the wickedness in your heart. He starts to reveal why you're in your season, single season and why you kept failing in relationships and why you're not walking in purpose. And you, it really forces you to reevaluate some things. So I would say the biggest part, you know, for me and the biggest struggle was acknowledging my, my, my shortcomings, acknowledging the areas in which God wanted me to work on, and then let him transform me in, in those areas. It is all mm -hmm. about truth telling, isn't it? <laughs> telling ourselves the truth that we are not all that and being <laughs> honest with ourselves and with God. Because if you don't, God will let you fall on your face mm -hmm. so many times that you have no other way to look than up and say, God help me. So we have a choice. You can either be proud and do your own thing and God will let mm -hmm. you fall again and again publicly. You can either be humble or you can be humiliated. You make a choice. And so it's a beautiful thing to hear when you come to grips with yourself and sit yourself down. I don't know if you've done that, but I have call myself by name and sit myself down <laughs> and talk to myself, right? And God always is there to, to pick us up and to help us. This is wonderful conversation here. Michael, chime in. What are your thoughts? What are the challenges that you face as a man, Christian man, and how do you overcome it? Yeah, one thing as a Christian man, it's um, in being single, is that um, it, the fact that I am single and I don't have any commitment towards any woman on this planet. You know, I'm not married to her. I don't have a girlfriend right now. It's a steady girlfriend right now. In that, in that regard, so well, uh, I just have friends that just happen to be female. Some of them, they truly are friends. But um, I live right near Southwest Philly, the Audubon, if you're familiar with that. There are places over there to tempt you. I've driven by there many times. So, you know, so I said, I just got to keep in my car and keep focused and just keep going homework, which is the way that I was going anywhere, going to my destination. So it's, uh, it's, it's not easy being a single guy, you know, and things are. It's um, there, you know, like it's just so simple just to pull your car in or someplace, and, you know, and just, but that's not the place you want to be. Bad things happen in those places a lot of times. So. You do not want to be there. The lore is there. The devil customizes it, but you can, God gives us the power to say no. Now, I'm going to pick up from you, Michael, because you kind of is a nice segue to my next question about loneliness. How real is it and how do you deal with it? It's, it's real. It's real. Um, the one thing, like, well, not just one thing, but there's there's one thing uh, about being single again that um, uh, married guys um, uh, have a better uh, have it better with, in my view, is just that they always have someone there, wife there, a companion. Um, I don't have that, so um, I know every time I go to bed, it's by myself. <laughs> so, you know. Um, so it, it's it's just not having that intimate, not having this intimacy with women, and, and just so um, it, it's difficult. You know, things that are out there, and just um, it's just difficult in general. And you have um, family members and friends asking you so many times, "Why aren't you married? Why aren't you married?" You know, my age, and like, well, I haven't found the right woman. I guess you know, it's, it's, it's the right it's the answer you already know. So I'm sure you already do. So uh, yeah, that gets old, you know. So those are some of the challenges. Now, I'm going to stop there and talk to the ladies. Did you hear this guy? You know, they <laughs> think that it's just the ladies who are under pressure. He's saying that he's getting the exact same pressure. 
you know, I listen, there was one guy that kept asking him in church, are you, are you still single? So he began to ask them, are you still married? Because he had to push back. He had to push back. He was just too much pressure coming. It's so refreshing to hear our brothers tell us today that we are not alone, ladies. It's not just you as a lady. Guys feel the same thing. Well, Michael does. So let me find out. Eric, do you? Um, Loneliness yes, is what we're talking yes. about. How do you deal with it? Right, right, right. Um, it used to be tough. It used to be tough. It, and it, it, it's gotten better with time. But, um, you know, the one thing that uh, God has taught me is, you know, I have to get... To, I have to continue to build a relationship with him. And um, part of that, sometimes you're going to be, when you're building a relationship and trying to get closer to God, it's going to be a lonely time sometimes, you know? So um, by trusting God and continuing to build a, a relationship with him, you know, knowing God intimately drives away uh, my doubt, my fear, and my loneliness. That is very uh, true. And let, let me drill down a little bit. There's a thing called solitude that I found. It's a practice that has gone into significant disuse in these days because we live in an overstimulated society, right? You touch somebody and something beeps. We have three cell phones. We have all kinds of things going at once. But solitude is being alone with God where you can be alone without being lonely because of your relationship and focus on God. And I think that's what Eric is talking about, being able to, able to be alone with God. And by the way, let me share for the ladies. You know what? We need to you know, be able to date yourself. You need to be able to enjoy your own company. If you can't enjoy your own company, why should somebody else do that? So I'm just letting the ladies know, you know, be able to, we've got to enjoy our own company. Spend time with you. Take yourself out if you need to or just enjoy a good movie, it's okay. Um, and you can do that without feeling lonely and just have the presence of the Lord. Well, Lord, loneliness. Yeah, I definitely struggled a lot, especially when I went through that whole acknowledgement phase because God really separated a lot of people in my life. And he put, I had a few breakdowns because I had to realize the fact that I was by myself and I was the type of person where I wasn't used to being by myself. I was used to being around a lot of people. I was used to being involved in everything I could be involved in. And so when he separated me and pulled certain people away from me, it, it made me acknowledge the fact that I didn't love who I was. And I didn't know how to spend that time by myself. I didn't know how to spend that time with the Lord. And so that was, that was definitely a struggle for me. And another thing is that an idle mind is the devil's playground. You know, so a lot of times as singles and we don't have anybody around, you know, we can get to that place of idleness. And then that's when the enemy will try to use, you know, our thoughts against us. He would try to use our desires against us. He would try to use our flesh against us when we sit in an idle state. That's why we have to continuously be feet in our spirit, our, our spirit, man. We have to be continuously when we're by ourselves. You know, this is a time for us to be with the Lord. It's time to focus on our purpose. This is a time for us to feed our spirit, you know, rather than for us to sit idly and fill it with things that are just going to feed the loneliness. Absolutely. Again, great commentary. And it's good to hear uh, from these guys. You know, this is real, keeping it real. I love it. I'll ask you one more question. And then we have plenty of questions from the, from the ladies who are listening tonight. They really want uh, your, your um, perspective on some things. Um, one of my own questions, how do, do you guys get frustrated with waiting as well? Um, as as a lot, we hear from a lot of the ladies, does it do you get frustrated or is it easier to handle? Um, Eric, you can start. Um, I would have to say yes. Yes, I get frustrated sometimes. I'm waiting on uh, the promise that God has made to me. You know, he's promised me a mate, but, you know, it's just, it's just frustrating sometimes. But, you know, just like I said before, you know, he, he wants me to get closer to him and he wants me to have that right relationship built up with him. So when he does send the mate, I know how to treat him. Absolutely. That's beautiful. So God has made a promise. He's holding on to the promise. But in the meantime, he's getting ready so that he will recognize the mate and he will be able to treat her right. That's beautiful. 
Go ahead, uh, Michael, chime in there. Yes, um, just recently, a few months back, um, I got a call from this, well, to sum it up, uh, did speed dating years ago, about a year or two ago, downtown when I was working in the city. And they called me and said they needed more guys. So um, I went and did the speed dating thing and I met this woman on there that um, we actually met after um, and I was physically attracted to her. I'm physically attracted to her. But when we met up, the conversation was just blah. It wasn't like a good chemistry. So um, we talked through just a little bit on the phone and then um, she just didn't stop returning my calls. I mean, I called her about like two or three times and said her text. So I just said, I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to reach out to her anymore. So it's just, you know, dead in the water and didn't work out. So what does get frustrating in that regard is and I am saying to myself, why, why isn't it a connection here, Lord? Why aren't you working for this? You know, here's a woman I'm trying to do, and you know, <laughs> but it just wasn't meant to be. So, you know, you get over it, you know. So just like again, it's good to hear from the guys that it's not just the women, there's the frustration. But you know the thing though, is that I'd rather I thank God sometimes for that frustration that you're not getting in with the wrong person. Yeah. Because what if you you know, maybe she, you know, you go down that path and she is, you know, participates and you end up being with the person that you're not supposed to be. Right. So I do thank God for closed doors. And when he shuts doors, I'm learning to, to dance in the hallway, <laughs> you know, in front of the closed door and thank him because the worst thing, and I can tell you this as a, a licensed counselor, the worst thing you want to do is to marry the wrong person. It is just a sad yeah situation you'd rather be where you are and have peace when you get home <laughs> than have yeah. you know world war three going on yeah. constantly uh, yeah, all around. Amen. george how about you uh yeah it, it was definitely frustrating for me at first and it was only frustrating because i didn't understand that it was purpose in my scenes um that but it, once i understood that the the frustrated the frustration alleviated you know but i really like I said, it was just frustrating at first because I thought that I was ready. I thought that I was prepared. And, you know, once God showed me that I wasn't, I was like, all right, I understand that. I, I get while I'm speaking. I understand why you're putting me in this place. I understand why you want me to focus. It's so that way I can prepare for what it is that, that he has for me. So that way I can obtain favor in him. So that way, because at the end of the day, he who, who finds a good mate finds favor in the Lord. So I have to first find favor from him, you know? And so he, I had to get into that position in, to, in order to find favor through him. And that's only through obedience and doing what he tells me to do. But up until before I realized that, it was definitely frustrating because I was, you know, cycle after cycle, me stepping outside of God's will, trying to do things my way and it not working. You know, it was definitely frustrating. But, you know, when I submitted myself to God and I just trusted him, and I started living, you know, by faith and not by sight, you know, it, it was peace. It was a peace beyond, you know, all understanding. Wow, this is exactly, ladies, did you hear that? It is exactly the thing that women uh, go through. And you know, the Bible says it's not good for the man to be alone. So brothers will feel for you. And by the way, George, Amen. that scripture says, he that findeth a wife, not he that findeth a mate. He that findeth a wife, <laughs> findeth a good thing and obtains favor. So there's tremendous favor waiting for the man who finds not a girl, not a woman, but a wife. There's a, a, a great difference between wife and female or woman or whatever, you know, beauty. There's a, a big difference. But when you do find a wife, there's a tremendous favor that's locked up in there. Okay, we have some questions for you from my sisters tonight. First question is, what do women do that makes women seem thirsty for, to a man? Or maybe desperate might be another word for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're laughing at it. Why don't you go first? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Um, you know what? It's, it's, it's um, you know, I... I now I now I realize you know what what really what a what a what a a female that doesn't have my best interest is now you know back back when I played in the NFL you know I used to have jewelry and cars and stuff and you know a lot of females were kind of like because I had that stuff they were attracted to me you know, and that, and that made them thirsty, you know what I'm saying? But 
you know, now, you know, I realize that it's, it's not about those things, you know, and, and um, which has allowed me to have patience, you know, in, in relationships, you know, so now I'm just, I'm just waiting on God. And, and when you wait on God, I believe, I know that he'll send you the right person, you know, and, and they, they'll be thirsty for God, then they'll be thirsty for you. Mm. that is great uh we had a show with my girl shelly the other day and we talked about exactly that that you know listen you know when you see god ladies you want a man who finds you because he's looking for god and he bumps into you in god that's the best way to move forward all right michael what makes a woman desperate or uh, thirsty what what is that thing that you're like oh this is uh <laughs> I guess um, I mean that she's just overly aggressive towards getting a guy. Um, I guess if um, we were to put it towards uh, Hollywood, it would be um, I guess Moeek and the Professor, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on the TV show, on the sitcom, or something. Just, just, just overly aggressive. You know? Yeah. Right. Do not it's, be. It's, it's, it's a turn off. Yeah. When you're overly aggressive. Yeah. Go ahead, George. I will say, so my, I, I will ask a question and return to the ladies. Uh, it, well, not necessarily a question, but are you willing to step outside of God's will for your life in order to get what you want? If you are willing to step outside of God's will in order to fulfill your, your quote unquote desire, then I, that, I feel like that would be quote unquote thirsty because you're willing to settle for for less settle for god's standard settle rather than getting god's best you're just ready to jump into something you know i've been in and and it's easy to tell you know like i've been in situations where i noticed that a woman was settling on certain things that she may have had wanted in a man right um because simply because she just wanted to be in a relationship right and so we have to really, and that goes for men as well. We have to ask ourselves, are we stepping outside of God's will in, in whatever this relationship is with this person? You know, is this is this what God would really have for me? Is this God's best? Um, and so I think that's a good indicator to tell whether you're quote unquote being thirsty is if you're willing to step outside of God's will in order to get what you want. I mean, those are excellent, you know, comments. I can tell you the, the dangerous thing about wanting something that's outside of God's will is that you have to stay outside of God's will to keep it. If you get it outside of God's will, you have to remain outside of God's will if you want to retain it. And I don't know who wants to do that. I don't know. There's nothing on this earth, and you guys are wonderful men, but nobody on this earth is worth it stepping outside of God's will to get that. Because whatever you get that way is going to be burned up anyway. It's not going to last. And you know, for those who have my book, my single and happy book. The woman that we're talking about today is a woman I called Miss Shanida. You know, she needed a man, she needed a car, she needed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the desperado. That's a funny and joke, yeah. You do yeah. not want to be Miss Shanida. Um, <laughs> because if you don't respect yourself, ladies, that's not a good thing. One thing that God wants us to do, if you're a daughter of God, I don't care. You belong to God. You lift up your head, carry yourself with dignity and respect. God honors you, values you. You have tremendous worth and value. You are a daughter of the most high God. Do not discount yourself to get into a relationship. Um, well, I'm not a bargain basement woman. I told somebody one time, <laughs> I am not a bargain basement woman. You're not gonna find me out. Yeah, I'm not your 20% or 30% of woman. No, that's not me. Uh, and I know that the ladies who are on this show, you are not that, carry yourself the way that God created you, hallelujah. Um, one more question, well, we have a couple more questions. How do you men define natural beauty in a woman? That's a really good question. Who wants to go for it? I'll get toss up. Toss up. You said natural duty? Natural beauty. Oh, beauty, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So Michael, go, you asked, you clarify <laughs> it. <laughs> Answer it. Um, it's more to me than just um, your physical look. It's, um, it has to come from within too. Uh, 
there's a sportscaster is on channel 10 of her name is Jacqueline but um, she's, she's a pretty woman and I can and just to me as you know the guy when I um, see her on there uh, it's just a good feeling comes out like like it's natural it's like she's not she's not playing up to the camera it seems like it just comes from within. Um, and there's other women as well too that, that just seems like they're um they're just nice inside you know it's not just a, a show that they're putting on for the camera so it just has to come from within you know be genuine you know? i think you know, just people are just given the talents of just being able to um detect what is um real what's not Thank you, Michael. Um, Eric, what about you? How do you define um, beauty? I think natural beauty is 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 basically inner beauty, and the way that uh, I can define that is, you know, when our spirits connect. You know, when our when our spirits connect, and and that and that takes God. That, that's that comes from God. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's the only way I can describe it. Thank you. And George, what about you? Um, I would describe it in a few different ways. If we're talking physical, I would say natural beauty is what God is giving. You know, um, every, every woman is fearful. All of us, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, you know? And so first and foremost, whatever God is giving you is, is beautiful. Um, that's the first thing I would want women to know. Um, and secondly, I think there's nothing more beautiful than a woman who is willing to submit to the Lord um, um, because you first got to submit the Lord before you submit to your husband when he gives them to you, you know, but I think it's nothing more attractive than a woman who knows how to uh, just let the Lord work on her, you know what I mean, being able to acknowledge, you know, those things that, that the Lord wants to work on her with, you know, just being willing to listen, um, being willing to do the things that the Lord is telling her to do. You know, just being an honorable and respectful, you know, woman, I think that's the most beautiful thing. Absolutely. And thank you, guys. I love the vulnerability and the honesty that's coming from this panel today. Um, listening to your comments, it takes me back to Peter, where the Apostle Peter said, you know, that a woman's beauty should be that inner beauty that comes from a well soul. And that is not just the outward beauty. That, ladies, that doesn't mean you, you look all, uh, you know, drab. That's not what we're talking about. But don't let your beauty just be on the outward. Let the beauty of the soul in the spirit, let that radiate from inside. And that's the beauty that's enduring and lasting beyond all else. And um, by the way, one more thing to say is that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. Ladies, don't let, you know, Hollywood, um, it, it is a lie that all beautiful women are size zero, size two. That's a lie. Women, beautiful women come in all shapes and sizes. And God makes beautiful women. Whoever you are, whatever the right size for you, strive to get there and stay there and love yourself because God loves you and is super proud of you the way that you are. All right, another question. What physical things do men do to maintain boundaries? that women may misread as that you do not like them. So you, you have your boundaries, you set your boundaries, but a woman bumps up against the boundaries and she may think, oh, this guy doesn't like me, but it's just your boundaries. Okay, Michael, there, I, I see no, that. No, no, let someone else go first. <laughs> I'll let someone else go first. Michael is, uh, is pushing it up. Eric, you're a bold uh -huh. man. I have I haven't I have not dated in a while, so I I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I, I would say um, <laughs> that's a that's a hard question. I would definitely because for me personally, I haven't come across that problem in my courtship. I haven't come across that problem because our our boundaries were the same in a sense. You know, like God just set it up that way. The sense where like our our boundaries were the same. Um, and we were in agreement. We touched and agreed on our boundaries. But I would say uh, one thing when, when before when we were friends, one thing that made her think that I wasn't interested was the fact that I was very friendly. Like I kept it, I kept it friendly. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, you know, pursuing anything because I was focused on my purpose. I was focused on, you know, what the Lord wanted me to do. So I wasn't trying to chase anybody. I wasn't focused on a relationship. I was just waiting on God to just drop her in my spirit. So I wasn't. I wasn't really putting too much effort 
into, you know, seeking, seeking out, I guess you can say a relationship. I wasn't really putting too much effort into it. I wasn't, you know, it just wasn't on my mind. And so a lot of times, I, and I like to say, I had the scales on my eyes. And so a lot of times a woman may perceive that as, uh, well, I guess he's not interested when in fact, it's just the fact that maybe I, I just was focused, you know what I mean? And the Lord just, it, I just wasn't ready yet, you know? That's a good point. You're not ready yet. But George, sometimes you need to take the reins off and behold, sometimes the woman is right there <laughs> and you need to open that your eyes. Up, right? <laughs> and particularly in your case, because I do know the story. All right. Um, more questions here. For those who are celibate, how do you deal with your desire? This is getting real up close and personal. <laughs> I know that we kind of skirted around it before a little bit. Um, do you want did to, did I see your hand up, George? Um, I can answer first, that's fine. Okay, uh, one, I, I do, I do want to distinguish, right, when we're talking about abstinent versus celibacy. You know, abstinent is, is abstaining for a period of time, whereas though celibacy is a gift. The gift celibacy, celibacy is a gift from God where you're just completely not engaged in any sex or, or marriage. So I just wanted to make that distinguish whether, you know, people are celibate or, you know, absent. Hang on, hang on, let me be clear. When we, when this question about celibacy is talking mm -hmm. about with, outside of marriage. So if you're not married, you should not be having sex. Mm -hmm. That's, okay. that's what this is talking about. Right? Okay. Gotcha. And, and so, yeah, I would say. Um, it's just important about being focused because it was definitely a struggle for me at first, overcoming lust, overcoming masturbation. You know, it was it was definitely a struggle, you know, um, overcoming pornography. Like that was a struggle, a real struggle. Um, but slowly by just submitting myself to the, Lord, the to the Lord and just killing flesh every day, you know, I was able to overcome it through prayer, through focusing on on, you know, my purpose and what God wanted me to do. And then slowly he took the taste out of my mouth with those things, you know what I mean? Um, and just being able to see the, the benefit of, of waiting, seeing the benefit of waiting, seeing all the healthy relationships around me for people who did wait. Um, and like, it, it took the taste right of my, out of my mouth. And so I would say, you know, just staying focused on what the Lord wants you to do. Um, prayer for sure, um, fasting, definitely some things only come out through prayer and fasting. I definitely had to go on some fast. Um, and just letting the Lord, you know, work on you and just submitting yourself to him and not being so, you know, not, not allowing it to turn into shame and condemnation because it's hard, you know what I mean? Especially for those of us who, who were in a promiscuous lifestyle previously, it's hard. It's, that's something that's very hard to overcome. And so it's a process, um, honestly, and it took me a while. And, you know, I just had to submit myself to the Lord and just stay focused, you know, and then over time, you know, slowly but surely he stripped one thing away by another, so. You know, I love that vulnerability and transparency. And if you're listening to us today and you're a guy, this is real. God knows that this struggle is real. And as a Christian counsel, I talk to guys who are dealing with this issue. So uh, pretending around that is not the issue, but coming honestly to God and letting him and just letting him know to help you. God is right there to help you. Eric, you want to chime in there? Yeah, I'll just piggyback off of what George said. You know, it's, it's a daily struggle, you know, and, and salvation is a, it, it's a lifetime. And, you know, but each day and each time you fast, the more praying you do, the more, uh, um, re, uh, the more you read God's word, you know, it helps to suppress those temptations. Amen. Getting into God's presence because we are still in the body. We still have a body that is alive and well. And all these brothers I'm looking at, they have red, they are, you know, they have red blood running in their veins. So this is not a joke. This is for real. It's a challenge, but thank God that we do have help from God. Michael, what about Amen. you? You want to chime in here? Yeah, I mean, it's still difficult today as it was uh, when I was in college. And that was like, to me, the most difficult time was when I was away in the University of South Carolina. I didn't have a car, so um, in my spare time when I wasn't hitting the books, um, it was about just being honest to me. It was about finding women, you know, finding the, the pretty girls on campus. And there were other colleges um, near my school, like Benedict and Allen. It was right off off the uh, the other side of town. So um, 
And then when my friends went out, sometimes, you know, we just, most of the time, we just went out looking for women or, you know, whether it be at the mall or wherever. So um, it was just women, women, went, you know, at the downtime. So um, when you weren't doing hitting your books, but um, it's still difficult today. But it, it is easier today because um, I don't have those same type of friends, you know, back then. My, most of my friends are married. So, so it's a different situation now, but it is difficult. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that vulnerability, all three of you. I really appreciate that. Another question uh, for you. For the man, do you think it's okay for a woman when she first meets a guy to share that she will not be intimate with him, that she is not willing to have sex before marriage? George, I see you shaking your head. I see you, you know, no, no. It's okay. George, why don't you take this one? Um, I... That should be, I don't understand. I, I feel like a lot of times we're so afraid to talk about our abstinence journey. You know what I mean? That should be one of the first things that she talk about um, because it lets you know right away whether somebody is, is going, is, is somebody is for you or not. You know what I mean? Why waste time, you know, trying to uh, see if this person is interested? You know, why wait a week or a month to tell somebody that you're settling them? You can tell them right away. And most of the time, you shouldn't even have to, honestly. If you're engaged with another, you know, Christian male, you know what I mean. A lot of times, that honestly, it shouldn't even be a, a conversation because you both should be on the same page. If that makes sense, you both should be uh, striving for God in that way, in the, in the sense of abstaining from sex until marriage. And so, and yeah, I would, I would definitely just say that's something that's important to talk about soon, like very, very soon. Like, don't wait to, to hold that point because a lot of times uh, it can, you can end up breaking your own heart. You know what I mean? Uh, when you wait to, to reveal who it is that you are and what it is that God is doing in your life. But a lot of times that should be something that, that comes up naturally, you know, just as you engage with another, you know, uh, somebody that you're interested in as a fellow Christian, that should be something that you guys are on the same page about. Thank you, George. Uh, Michael, what about you? Yeah, I think um, I think it's important to get that out in front, but um, I think there's a caveat with this, and not only with uh, women saying that, even if the guy were to say that as well, uh, there's people out there, people out there that would see that as a challenge. Um, so some people may just try to get you in a situation where you're going to uh, they're going to win win at that game, and you're going to lose. So um, just try to, I would say, just. You know, along the way, just try to figure out what kind of person that is uh, before you say it right away. So maybe after I don't know, I don't know the right amount of dates so about the second or third date. Maybe um, you're starting to feel how this person is, like uh, if they're just out for um, just to get you in the bed or not. You know, so um, I think you just gotta weigh your options there. Just be careful. Thank you, Michael. How about you, Eric? I just, I think it's a beautiful thing when, um, you know, two people can agree, two Christians can agree on being on celibacy and, and abstaining until they get married. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing, but I can tell you uh, the personal experience of many women who have shared with me that they have pastors, those who are pastors. Uh, trying to compel them to go have, uh, you know, telling them that this is something that's very important to them and that, you know, they want to have, uh, you know, sex before marriage. And these are people who are pastors in churches. And it's so sad that that's, that's what's going on. But there are women who are on in a lot of pressure uh, that I meet. And, you know, these are men who tell them, I'm in the ministry, but if, if you're not willing to have sex, the relationship is not going anywhere. I mean, obviously for me, I would say, hey, hit the road, Jack, and don't come back no more. <laughs> That's my <laughs> response. But again, uh, <laughs> struggle. you know, this is the door and don't let the door hit you on your way out because nobody is, it's, you're not even worth it. You're not what, if you're not willing to submit to Christ, because listen, it's a different thing that somebody falls into sin, but this kind of person is planning to live habitually in sin that is rebellion is one thing that you are trying to do the right thing you're trying to you know obey god and be and be uh, to abstain and you fall into sin that's different even though that's wrong but that's different than a person who is on purpose 
choosing to live willfully outside of the will of God and trying to force and convince other people to live that way. That is rebellion and I do not want to be involved uh, in that. All right, we're getting to the end. I don't leave our sisters have kind of uh, they're enthralled by the answers or you guys are just, the questions are drying up a little bit. Um, what kind of things constitute outside of God's will? And I think this came a little earlier when we talked about living within God's will as being the first criteria of living a successful single life. Break that down, what does that mean? Eric, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to you. What does that mean to live within the will of God? Uh, what, what are the components of that, if you will? Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh, um, you know, following, following God's ways, you know, um, being obedient. You know, being obedient to his word, what his word says, you know. Um, you know, just following God, doing the things of God. Being obedient to God and doing the things of God. I do have one more question looking at the time. Let me ask this one. It says, should a woman ever make the first move or express interest in getting to know a guy? George, I know what you said the other day, and I meant to come back and talk about it. Maybe this is the time to talk about it, so I'll let you go because I know what you're going to say, and I know what I'm going to say when you say what you say. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, I shared with Gloria the other day with, with my Christian experience. You know, my Christian partner, she made the first move. Um, she definitely did. She invited me out to dinner she, with some friends. She invited me out on a job. She invited me out to lunch. And, you know, so she definitely made the first move, you know what I mean? And so I definitely, I always like to say, always be led by God, be led by the Holy Spirit. Do not be led by your flesh. <laughs> if you are in your flesh trying to make the first move, no. <laughs> but it's, it's different when you're being led by God, you're being led by the Holy Spirit, and you know that, that this is somebody that God will have for you, and you are you know, making that that first step, you know what I mean, and to, to gauge the interest or to see if the other person is on the same page. So I, I definitely don't see a problem with it, but primarily the men should. All right, I will say what I'll say later on, I'll hold on to it for now. Um, Michael, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I have no problem with it. I mean, it's, it's welcome. It's welcome to me. I mean, if she uh, wants to make the first move, I mean, you know, I appreciate it. So I always like to do things in private, just try to pull me off to the side or you know, so, so it's, it's perfectly fine with me. You know, I'm not All right, to Eric. blow up or anything like that. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, we, we heard from George and Michael that, you know, hey, if the lady wants to be to make the first move, go right ahead. I'm waiting. My Eric, what do you <laughs> Um, I, I, you know what, I, you know, to each, to each his own, but I would, I would rather woman not make the first move because to me, that's, that seems thirsty, but I believe that, you know, a woman should be sought after, you know what I'm saying? That's the way I, I believe that it should be upon further review. <laughs> I, listen, I completely, if anyone has my book, what I believe is already in my book, is, it was written in a long time ago, I completely agree with Eric. Listen, I think, but that's just me, okay? I'm not trying to force any lady. Um, I just think men should be the man. Men should take the lead. Any woman wants to be a strong man who knows what he wants, a man who is taking the lead. And if you're a strong woman, you want a man who can lead you. Women who live in many places, women like me, women like Shelly, women like many of the women on our, on our team and on this call, you lead men everywhere you go. You lead men at work, you lead men. You want a man who can take the reins at home and you can trust his leadership. If the man doesn't have enough confidence to step up and, and ask you out, man, you know, does, does, does he really care? A woman would always have that question. And by the way, I also know some women, and George, your case is a beautiful one, 
But I do know women who went out and did that. And they just became uh, taken advantage of by the guy and, and just tossed here and there and became a crutch until um, you know something else showed up. And that was not right in that circumstance. But of course, that's it. So this is so unique to the person. But what I wanted to address today was the instance that you raised the other day, George, about the case of Ruth in the Bible. And you're right, Ruth did make the first overture, but that was within a special context, the context of the Leverate Law in Israel. She didn't just see Boaz and like him and, you know, you know, reach out to him. It was within the context of the Leverate Law. Under that law, Boaz was to be, you know, the kinsman redeemer. And so her mother-in-law told her the, what to do. She wasn't even from Israel. So she wasn't like, oh, I like this man, Boaz. Let me go reach out to him. No, there was a structure that God has set in place. And she was just following those rules. And she didn't know them, so her mother-in-law taught her what to do. And she just, you know, followed that direction. So that's clearly very different from today. I like a guy. I want to let me just go out after him. Now, let me say this. This is how I believe this has been in my book. And I truly value and respect a man. It, it personally, whether I like a guy or not, if he really asked me out, I respect him tremendously just for that. Because that le level of leadership is just a beautiful thing to see in today's man. But um, ladies, I have learned in counseling, in temperament counseling, that there are men who just by their temperament, and this is my first time admitting it in public, <laughs> there are guys who by their temperament are not well equipped to take the first lead. It, it was eye-opening for me. I always thought that every man, particularly we live in a society that tells men, you gotta be the man, but there are men because of their temperament that are not equipped to be, to be the first mover. And in that instance, obviously, um, if the, you know, God will make it a way and, and things can work differently. But I wanted to admit this publicly because everyone who knows me knows I've, I have the other view. But I want to share now that I do know that for a fact that there are some temperaments, if there's a dominant temperament in the man, in the area of interpersonal relationships, is going to be, is harder, a lot harder for them to be able to, uh, to initiate. So but that's something that a man can be coached and helped. If he, can't, if he came to me as a temperament counselor, I would help him make the move. <laughs> Bust the move, man. Bust the move. <laughs> All right. I have one thing, if I could. Yes. Yeah. Um, my friend is from Liberia, and he told me this year, many years ago, he said back in his uh, country, I don't, this is what he said, back in his country, when a woman likes a guy, she'll tell her girlfriend to tell her his uh, guy friends. And so I don't, so I guess that's, you know, that's fine with me too, but um, they, that's another <laughs> avenue. You know, so. Yeah, people do that, you know, of course, you know, you tell, if you know someone who knows somebody, you can, through the grapevine, get the guy know that you like him or get the girl. I mean, this yeah. thing, it's kind of repeat, a repeat of like high school, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass this note, right? Yeah, and, you know, people, they, they ship people together and stuff like that. It's just an adult version of it. I mean, I love this conversation. This is honest. This is transparent. This is real. And, and listen, I really respect you guys a whole lot to answer these questions, to answer them honestly, and to provide insight to the sisters, because these are genuine questions that women have struggled with. And I thank God that you are here to answer them. All right, a couple more as we begin to, uh, we sh you know, we still have some time tonight. Now, what are some of the... Um, what is a proper way to ask a lady out on a date? Eric has already said, I haven't done it in a long while. Maybe Eric, you need to. <laughs> He's like, don't ask me. I've not, not done it in a long while. So who wants to take this one? I'm not going to assign it to someone. Who wants to go? I'll, I'll start. That's okay. fine. Um, I feel like a lot of times when, the, when it comes to identifying who our spouse is, who God will have for us, a lot of times, there are people who we already have in our lives sometimes, like our friends or, or people that we're in ministry with that we just never even pay attention to. And so in a sense for me, I know it wouldn't have, if I did have to make the first move, it wouldn't have been hard for me because we were already friends. You know, it's nothing to just say, hey, you know what I mean? What are you doing, you know, tomorrow, you know, let's go grab lunch or what are you doing, let's go grab ice cream, whatever the case may be. Like, it's nothing because we're already, we already have a friendship in a sense. 
You know what I mean? Um, so I think that when you have that friendship first with somebody, it should be absolutely it. It's not hard when it comes to just simply asking somebody what they like to go out and, you know, grab some gear and meet up or just to talk a little bit more and get to know them, you know? It's not that hard. George is saying it's not that hard. Michael, what about you? How would you, what's the right way to ask a lady out on a date? Well, I think it all depends on the situation. Um, if a lady is working and, you know, you don't think you'll see her outside of that, out of the work environment, um, if you're going to ask her out, and I've done this before, it just, I would keep it brief. And some guys wouldn't care about that one bit, you know, that she's not working and would just continue to talk to her and talk to her. But I would like to keep it brief. You know, I'll introduce myself, I'll pay her a compliment, and I'll, you know, ask her, tell her I'm single, and I would like to take you out sometime. But um, it, it depends on the situation. If it's a wedding, then you have more time to talk to her, you know, and feel that, you know, she's trying to engage with you in conversation. If she's not, I'd steer, I'd take a stake, I'd uh, step away from her. But, you know, if she is, I would continue, and then I would ask her out. But this it all depends on the situation. I don't think there's a uh, just one avenue to take on what's the right way, but there are ways that are the wrong way. And I've seen that, you know, <laughs> witness that sometimes when guys ask me to announce them. There you go, Mike, Michael is just direct. Hey, I'd like to take you out sometime. That sounds good to me. Eric, <laughs> you wanna just, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I agree, I agree with Michael, you know, just ask, you know, she says no, she says no and keep it moving. And that's a beautiful thing. I can tell you again, ladies, I tell ladies all the time, if the guy has the gumption to ask you, I'm being nice because it takes courage and it, is, it takes a lot of manhood to step out and do that. So be nice, be absolutely nice. Okay, let me go back to our audience. We have another question from the audience. Do you like intentionality? Or intentionally, I don't know. Do you like intentionally to talk in a relationship about marriage and such pretty early on, less than three months, or do you prefer for them to wait for your lead? I think the question here is, um, if, should a woman bring up the issue of marriage early on in a dating relationship, like before uh, less than three months, or do you prefer for them to wait and have you take the lead to raise the issue? Oh, no, I, I, I'll say that, um, yes, I would prefer it early in the relationship, but don't start making plans or anything right then and there. So, um, I mean, a simple, um, I would like to give everyone one day, what are your thoughts on that? You know, and just leave it right there. You know, but, um, just don't try to nail them down and say, you know, I, I would like to be married in one year or two years. And, you know, so, you know, <laughs> okay. You know, well, if we get to that point, that's right. Eric, what about you? What are your thoughts? Um, I, I, would, I think because it takes men, you know, longer to mature than women, I think that uh, the, the man should ask instead of the woman. The man you know, should. In my case, when I, you know, when I was dating, I, you know, I, I didn't want a woman to ask me. To, to get married. I just, that was just a turn off for me because I, first of all, I wasn't ready anyway, you know? So um, I think that the, the, the woman should wait for the man to ask, but it's to each his own, you know, today the women are asking, you know, guys, you know, for, you know, to get married and, you know, some of it works for some and some it doesn't, it doesn't work for us. So. That was, right. that's just been my experience. Absolutely. George, what about you? Um, I think that is, it, it's important in any, you know, dating relationship that you are expressing that your intention is to marry. Because a lot of times, some people just want to date for fun. You know what I mean? Some people are just out there to just date. And so I do, if, if you guys aren't, I think that's important to express that your intention is marriage, right? But before we even get to that point, um, you two should be on the same page in regards to going to the Lord to understand if this is this is this in your will for us is, is this the person that you will have for me you should be intentional about asking the Lord for confirmation 
about the particular person that you are interested in. That's the first step before you even, you know, talk about marriage. God, let's go to the Lord. <laughs> Lord, is, are we supposed to be together? Is, is this what you will have for us? And then if he says yes, then of course the goal is marriage. And then you're just building on it from there. But I always think that the first step is going to the Lord together to see if that this is what he would want. And then if it is, then you already know that that, that marriage is, is the answer, you know, the goal when you have to question it. And again, this is one way I wanted to wait until everyone answers because my position is already out there in my book. I believe that a guy should take the lead in raising this issue. And also, um, because I think clarity um, to, to the point that George made, it's important to clarify the relationship. In my book, I put out uh, four principles of biblical dating. And one of those is that any biblical dating should have as an ultimate goal, marriage, because like George is saying, so many people are just dating for fun and that's, that's a problem. That's putting yourself into temptation for no good reason. Um, but again, I think the man should take the lead to clarify the relationship. That build, gives a tremendous level of covering for the woman that you're asking to come along with you. It gives her tremendous covering to know that the man is, is thinking right and is having a, you know, a thought process that goes into the future and that covers her and that thinks about her in the future. It's a beautiful thing to see when a man does that. It brings, it covers the woman. It gives her tremendous um, you know, um, protection under, under the shoulders of this man. And she knows that he has shoulders big enough for her to lean on. Right, I have another question uh, for you here. What is the difference between courting and dating? And I'll ask you, George, on that, because we talked about that just on Wednesday of this week. And again, it's in my book, Biblical Dating, another word for it really is courtship. George, can you distinguish those two? Um, yes, so the major difference between dating and courtship is that uh, courtship is with God at the front um, and with accountability from other godly couples. Um, and those are the major, the, the major differences when it comes to dating. When we're dating out in the world, you know, you're on your own. You guys are figuring out on your own. There's no accountability. There's no uh, uh, boundaries. You guys are just kind of out there on your own trying to figure it out. And God is not at the front of that. But when it comes to courtship, you know, first and foremost, God is at the front of it. You guys are seeking the Lord together. You have um, godly couples who are holding you guys accountable while you are on your courtship journey, who are walking you through your courtship journey. You guys have boundaries in place to make sure that you guys aren't falling, to make sure that you guys aren't falling into temptation. Um, and, you know, tip, courtship looks different for everybody, but the main thing is that God is at the front. You're establishing, you know, spiritual oneness with one another, emotion, then emotional oneness with one another, and making sure that you have accountability and boundaries along the way. Yeah, George. Um, and um, anybody else wants to chime in there? Eric, you want to chime in there, Michael? Um, I just say I, I agree with George. You know, when when you have God as the head, you won't make the mistakes. You know that'll cost you a lifetime of pain. You know. Yep. And as as you get older, you can't afford too many mistakes. You can't afford mm -hmm. to make. More, I mean, there are many mistakes. A lot is at stake. You know, your your you have a next egg is at stake. Your future is at stake. Your old age is at stake. You know, you you know, it's a little too late to make too many mistakes. Uh, we're not you're not twenty anymore, and you can't afford wasted years. Um, in my book, I actually laid out four elements of biblical dating. Some of what George talked about. One is God. Both of you submitting that relationship under His authority and the Word of God. Uh, which of course includes what we talked about earlier about abstinence. But second of all is, you know, having an accountability relationship, some oversight, somebody who is in your lives that would help you stay accountable. And the, the third thing is some sort of transparency. So you're not spending all this time alone in, in, in your house on a couch together. That's temptation waiting to, to lure you away. Have, have your relationship out in the open, date, you know, in public places. Uh, so as much as possible so that you are not vulnerable to the enemy's temptation. And lastly, make sure that the ultimate goal is that you're looking eventually, uh, you're considering marriage and it's not just hanging around and just dating around, you know, um, because again, that's an, an, a recipe for, for disaster. Yeah. 
All right, we do have, we're beginning to wind to a close here. We have a couple um, quick questions. Maybe one person can answer this. Um, what is the acceptable dating to courting uh, marriage timeline? George, quickly. <laughs> it really varies. Like, it really varies. Like, for me, like, I'm set to be married in September, and we started our courtship in May. So it's only been about uh, going on four, probably it'll be four or five months, I think, six maybe. Um, but I think, and I know somebody who courted for three years. Um, so it, it really is it, different for everybody. And it's all about, you know, letting the Lord, you know, just guide you in that relationship. It's different for everybody. All right. Uh, another question here. Um, how do guys feel about women paying for dates? Who wants to take that? Michael, Eric? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no. I mean, um... Michael is like, if she wants to pay for it, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I would offer, you know, I wouldn't want her to pay for, for, the, uh, for the dates at all. Okay, so you, you don't want the lady to pay for, for the date. Okay. Um, another question coming to you, Eric. Let me see which one. I'd like to hear the men's perspective about dating as a platonic relationship with no desire for marriage. <laughs> Did I, you I, I don't I don't like it because I, I feel it's, that's a waste of time. Absolutely. It's a waste of her time. It's a waste of my time. That's why I don't date now. <laughs> it's a waste of my time. Plus, I, plus I already know who, who God told me I'm going to marry. So I'm good with that. Why waste somebody's time? There you go. Why waste somebody's time? Look at that. Um, you just want to be friends, be friends. I mean, you yeah, are dating. You're dating. I mean, that's right. a, the question is doesn't it doesn't compute because it's a platonic relationship with no desire for marriage. Then it's not dating. I don't know what this is, but um, it's definitely a waste of time. Um, what was the best way to respond to guys who are interested in you but not Christians? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, Bye. Peace. <laughs> in, 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 in a respectful, of course, and loving way, of course, send them on their way in a loving way. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, God tells us to not be unequally yoked. I mean, relationships are tough enough when you have That's a Christian, it. a committed Christian, talk less of when you go and grab somebody who is. And the way that I say, for those who know me, and I said it in my book, when you marry an unbeliever, you have the devil as your father-in-law and he can come to your house any day he wants because his son or daughter is living there. <laughs> That's your house. <laughs> he can come in any day. You have the devil as your father-in-law. Oh, I'm telling you, um, there's another last question about um, op opposites attract. Is that true? Maybe so, but sometimes when you get married, then you repel. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a joke. Um, yes, <laughs> I see the ladies laughing. We don't have time to get into that. Sometimes opposites do attract. Um, no, we can't answer anymore. We are out of time. We need to close it down. Listen, ladies, I want a round of applause for this man. These are absolutely great conversation today. This is fantastic. They are bold and they went in there and they told it like it is. I love it. I love it. Thank you to our panelists and thank you to our audience. What a powerful conversation we've had today. And our next single sense would actually be in September. We are skipping August because as you just heard today, we are going to have our summit. 2021 summit is on August the 7th. It is fantastic. We already have people registered from uh, you know Jersey all the way to North Carolina. If you haven't registered, why not? What are you waiting for? God is going to show up marvelously. And one of the things that God has told us to do um, in the uh, keynote is actually to pray uh, for those who are trusting God to, to be in a relationship and have been waiting and you want a breakthrough. So we've never done this before. We're doing this really by uh, direction, you know, from the Lord. So we're going to do have breakthrough prayer to, to tear down because God said to me, he said that he, many of his single sons and daughters 
are frustrated and discouraged because they think that God hasn't answered. And the Lord says that he has answered, but there are opposition forces and we need to come in prayer and to tear them down. So we'll be doing that and this summit so that God's people can actually take hold of his promise and make it manifest in their lives. So join us. And again, there's so much good that God is going to do. Shelly is joining us. Uh, uh, Dr. Jones, um, Michael and Kona, it is going to be fabulous. Uh, she, I mean, I don't want to repeat the things that have been said. If you haven't registered, do that. Early bird is ending tomorrow. Tomorrow, this event is fantastic. And God always shows up every time we go there. It is transformational. If you go to our website, www.savedsinglessummit.com, you would find the videos from the uh, past summit, the photographs from the past summit, the testimonials of those who have attended from the past summit. This event is transformative, is transformational for people. With that, I think I'm doing the local focus for today. I would usually, will turn it over to um, Debbie, but today Charity Crossing is a local organization in, in Delaware that is doing a fabulous amount of work to help people. Uh, we believe that whole singles are singles who are others focused, meaning that they invest themselves, their time, their resources to help other people. I truly think, uh, and it was uh, Billy Graham that said that, you know, the, the most, um, you know, the most miserable person that he saw um, is the person who is wrapped up in themselves. And when you're wrapped up in yourself, you make a very small package. So reach out, broaden your gaze, broaden your life, fill your life with joy when you reach out and help somebody else. How can you help? Charitycrossing.org. Go there. There are so many ways that you can help. You can give financially. You can support them by being there to, in one of the events. Just help the community. Um, shut in, just have so much that they do, uh, clothing, shut ins, resources that they provide to the community. You can support Charity Crossing again on their website. I will turn it over now to um, Latoya. Latoya? Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, good evening, everybody. I am Latoya, and hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. Um, you can, yeah, I was about to say, you can stop sharing. Guys, okay, so I was uh, listening to the um, our discussions and I was like, you know what, we need like a call to action or like an action item after. Because how many of you have ever sat, like especially at work, your trainings, and then afterwards you like log off and you're like done and you forget everything that was said. You don't really process it. So I just want to say like kind of just take a second um, to just kind of think about like what was said tonight. I don't know if you took notes. I took some notes um, just because some of the things that we're saying were just really great reminders to me. So what was some, like, what is one thing that you want to do or change or kind of start to do so that we can pursue Christ so that we can stay connected so that we can live on purpose or like just the things that we talked about tonight, um, being spiritually equipped. Um, we can't resist things alone. We, we need prayer. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us. Um, acknowledging our shortcomings and then getting into God's face. These are some of the things I wrote down. What is one thing? And you don't have to share it in the chat, but definitely like think about it and just kind of like take it with you over these next few weeks. Um, continuously feeding the spirit, man. One thing I kind of used to think was that, you know, you, you go to church, then you're good to go. Or, you, you know, you read one scripture, then you're good to go. But it is, you have to be so intentional um, about feeding the spirit because it's something that like, as soon as you cut the faucet off, you don't have water. So keeping that faucet continuously going, and I mean like that, the, that connection with God, it ha that flow has to continue to go. So what is one thing you are going to do this week, um, maybe to just can to continue to pursue Christ um, in your singleness? What is your takeaway? I'll just give some people some time, see if they feel comfortable typing it. And if not, I am going to... Uh, do one last uh, um, commission for the the, uh, the summit. I really have a great time when I go interacting with different people, food, fun, dancing, games. I'm all about that. So if you haven't signed up, sign up. You'll have a great time. I um, mean, if you can't go because you have something else on the date, share it, share it, share it with other people just so that they can get connected and have that day. 
<laughs> so I'm reading here what people are writing good. So don't be thirsty. Yes. Maximize them and become more self-aware. <laughs> yes. Getting into a Bible project. I, yes, the Bible project. I like that. And they actually have a lot of videos um, that, that break down scripture. It's such a great resource on YouTube as well as a website. Continue to connect with others. Yes, we need connection. Connection is super important. Like it really helps you to, and connection from people who are speaking truth. It just really helps you. Because if you're listening to people who are not speaking truth, then you're going to, you can get um, straight, you can stray away. Especially your friends are like, oh, I do this or I'm okay with that. Can make sure you're connected with the people who who really are following the word of God truthfully. All right, guys. Thank you for those who are adding to the chat. Yes, use those resources, resources, get connected to the word. We talk about the word. Colossians is a book I was just reading. It's just such a good reminder of um, like I feel like everything of like salvation in Christ, walking in Christ, and then what's to come and and in truth. So Colossians, that's my challenge to you. If you kind of feel like I don't know what I want to do from here, read the book of Colossians and just continue reading the word. Let's pray. Um, thank you guys so much for just taking that time to just really think like, what am I gonna do after I clog off of this Zoom? Um, all right, let's pray. Uh, Father God, I thank you so much for um, just who you are. You're a God who cares so much about us. You have, you want us to have a relationship with you. It's so, it's so cool. God, we were, we were um, not a people. And then you called us into a people. You called us to be your sons and daughters. We were kind of like lost, a little in darkness. God, and you invite us into light. You invite us into truth, into wholeness. You restore the brokenness. You you heal those areas in our life where we were hurt and you bring healing and you just put your anointing oil all over it. God, it's awesome to be connected to you because where we're not whole, God, we are whole in Christ. And you are the author, the finisher of our faith. Everything is in you. God, help us not to lose sight of that, that we have everything we need um, if we are in Christ and God continue to help us to grow and to learn what that means so that we can experience the fullness of joy, the fullness of love that comes with walking with you. And I pray that each person listening can experience that joy, that wholeness, that completeness, even if all the boxes of their life are not checked off, they can experience it right now in Jesus name. And we lift these things up to you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming. Have a great night. We love you. We thank you for being here. Have an awesome evening. Good night, everybody.